All right, 1.4 is solving inequalities, and that's on pages 26 to 34 in your text. Our curriculum outcome, again, it's none or all, depending on how you look at things. So we need to know all this stuff in order to do questions later on in the course. Lesson objectives, to recall the basics of solving inequalities, specifically when you need to flip the inequality sign. And number two, to learn how to solve double inequalities, as well as inequalities that have a degree of two or greater, and rational inequalities. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look back uh, when you need to actually flip an inequality sign. So that means if it's a greater than sign to change it into a less than sign and vice versa. So we can apply these basic facts to solving other inequalities. So, so actually solving equations. So to do this, we're gonna look at the basic inequality four is greater than two. So first we're gonna, gonna perform all operations with four is greater than two. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna add the same number to both sides. And so we'll say we're gonna add a two to both sides. So I get four plus two and two plus two. And that gives me six is greater than four. That is still true. So we didn't have to actually flip the inequality sign there. If I subtract from both sides, subtract two from both sides, I get two is greater than zero. Well, that's also still true. So I don't have to flip the inequality sign there. If I multiply both sides by something, like a two, then I get eight is greater than four. That's still true. No need to flip the inequality sign. If I divide both sides by something, four divided by two and two divided by two, I get two is greater than one. That is still true, so I don't need to flip it then. But there are a few times that you do need to flip it. So if I were to multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by negative two, now I get negative eight is greater than negative four, and that is not true. So in order to make this thing true, I need to turn that inequality sign around. So that's the first case. If you multiply by a negative, you need to flip that sign. Our second case will be if we divide by a negative. So if I take four and I divide it by negative two, and I take two and I divide it by negative two, I now get negative two is greater than negative one. That's also not true. So to make this thing true, I'd have to flip the sign. So dividing by a negative, the second way that we have to uh, change our inequality sign. And our final way is if I take the reciprocal of both sides. So if I have four is greater than two and I flip both sides of the, of the equation or the inequality, now I get a quarter is greater than a half. And we know that that is not true. So in order to make it true, it has to be quarter is less than a half. So the third situation is when you flip both sides. That's when we have to change the inequality sign from a greater than to a less than or vice versa. All right, a couple examples here. It says solve the following inequalities and give your answer as an interval. So our first one is here. It says five minus three fifths times two X minus one is greater than one half X minus eight. So as a reminder, if you don't like fractions, you can get rid of fractions. Just choose a number to multiply each term by. In this case, I would probably multiply everything by 10. And that way you get rid of all your fractions. So 10 times five is 50. This is 30, 10 times three is 30, divided by five is six. We still have two X minus one. Greater than, we've got 10 uh, and multiplied by half is five. So that's five X minus 80. So now we can just manipulate this equation, solve it like a linear equation by multiplying the six in, so that becomes 12x, that becomes plus six. This is five x minus 80. We'll move everything, uh, we're gonna move the numbers to one side and the x's to the other side. So I'm gonna move the x's to the right hand side and that way I don't have to worry about having a negative value for x. So if I do that, I move this negative 12 over to the other side, so I add 12x to both sides. And on this side, I will then get uh, 17x. And I have 56, and if I add 80 to both sides, 56 and 80 is 136. I can now divide both those things by 17. And I get x is uh, less than or eight, or eight is greater than x. So what you need to do is it says write your answer as an interval. So that says x is less than eight. So that means we're taking everything from negative infinity to eight. And we're going to have two open brackets because there's no equal sign here and you can never close off the uh, negative infinity sign. So that's one example of using inequalities. Now, I avoided dividing by a negative number by moving my axis to the right-hand side. If we were to move them all to the left-hand side, we'd have a negative 17 on the left-hand side. 
and we'd be dividing both sides by negative 17, and then we would have to flip this sign. You would still get to the same answer, though. All right, our second example. It says uh, 1 sixth is less than or equal to 3 divided by 1 over 2x, which is less than or equal to a half. So this is what we call a double inequality. And the way that we solve this is no different than the way that we solved the one on the left-hand side. You just need to, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to all three sides. So the first thing I'm going to do, this uh, 1 minus 2x is in the bottom, and that's a problem. We need that in the top. So we're just going to flip it. We're going to change it to uh, 1 minus 2x over 3. But this is one of the situations where if we do that, if we take the reciprocal of something, we do need to flip the signs. So both signs now change directions. And that 1 sixth now becomes 6, and that 1 half now becomes 2. So that's a big thing. Um, next, we want to get rid of this 3, so we're going to multiply each thing, each side. I guess there's three sides. We're going to multiply everything by 3. So 3 times 6 is 18, and that is greater than or equal to 1 minus 2x, because these two 3s have cancelled out which is greater than or equal to 6. Now I need to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract 1 from everything. So I end up with 17 over here is greater than or equal to negative 2x, which is greater than or equal to 5. Now I need to divide everything by negative 2. But here's another one of our situations where if we divide by a negative number, we need to switch all the signs. So we get 17 divided by negative 2, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to negative 5 over 2. So we can write this as an interval as well. The interval in this case is going to be everything in between. So x is actually in between uh, negative 17 over 2 and negative 5 over 2. And those can be square brackets because we have equal signs with our inequalities. So another way to solve inequalities, and these are when our inequalities get a little more complicated. So if we have like a, a quadratic or some, a polynomial that has a degree greater than 2 or 3, um, we can use something called a side analysis. It also works for rational inequalities, which is quite helpful. So remember that when we were asked to find out where f of x is greater than 0, or if we're trying to find out where our function is less than 0, what we're really describing is where f of x is above or below the x-axis. So if f of x is less than 0, that's where it's going to be below the x-axis. If it's going to be greater than 0, that's where it's going to be above. So some main points that will help us determine where um, this occurs are the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes. So since this is where f of x equals 0, or where it's undefined. So by using factoring, which we did the other day, we can find these points along with the sign analysis to actually find out our answer and answer our inequality. So example, solve the following inequality and specify your solution in set and interval notation. So we're looking for x squared minus 4 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2, and we're looking for where that is less than 0. So if we're looking at a graph of this thing, we're looking for where that thing is going to be underneath the x-axis. Now, this thing, hard to graph, especially without graphing software. So we're going to use our sign analysis to find this out. And to do that, our first step is to factor. So that's a difference of squares on the top. That's x minus 2 and x plus 2. On the bottom, we get x, uh, two things that multiply to positive 2 and add to negative 3, x minus 2 and x minus 1. Now remember, I just said that the important things are um, x-intercepts and asymptotes. And you have to remember from last lesson that there's also such things as holes in graph, and that's when you have the same factor in the top and the bottom. So we can get rid of those x minus 2s. So really, our big thing is that we have an x-intercept at x equals negative 2. And our other big thing is that we have an asymptote at x equals positive 1. So here's what our sign analysis is. We just draw a number line. And what we're doing is we're plugging in values that don't that aren't 1 and aren't negative 2 but we're going to plug in values anywhere in between here now it's nice to know that this is actually equal to 0 and this is a asymptote so it does not actually exist at this point so sometimes we'll just write d and e in there so really if we can plug in a number into this function and we might as well use the simplified version of this function if we can plug in a number that is less than negative 2, we'll find out whether or not it's in above or below the x-axis. So if I plug in like a negative 3, I will get negative 3 plus 2 divided by negative 3 minus 1. 
And the actual result here isn't that important, although it's negative one over negative four, but the sign of this result is that is a positive number. It's a positive one quarter. So what that means is if one point on the left-hand side of negative two is positive, it means that all the rest of them are also positive. So this is where the function is above the x-axis. Now, if we plug in a point between negative two and one, find out the same thing, we're gonna find out what the sign of that number is. So the easiest point between negative two and one is zero. So we put zero plus two over zero minus one. That gives me a two over negative one, and that is negative two. And so this is all negative. And then we look at on the right hand side of one. So something that's greater than one, uh, we'll go with the number two. If I plug that in, I get two plus two, and I get two minus one. That gives me a four over one, that gives me a positive four. So here is where it's positive. So back to the original question, it says, where is this thing actually less than zero? And here's the interval where it's less than zero. It's marked clearly on our little number line. It's been between negative two and one. So our final answer, they wanted it in interval notation. So, and also solution set notation. So we're looking for X. So we're gonna put in everything from negative two to one. Now, this is where it's equal to zero. So we can include that. So that's a curvy bracket. And this is actually an asymptote, so it never actually gets to 1. So that's a curvy bracket there as well. So in summary, there are only three situations when you would actually flip the inequality sign when you're solving an inequality. Number one is if you end up multiplying by a negative. Number two, if you end up dividing by a negative. And number three, if you end up taking the reciprocal of the both sides of the equation. So when you're solving a double inequality, you need to make sure to manipulate all three sides of the inequality. And finally, a sign analysis will always be helpful when trying to solve a quadratic inequality, a rational inequality like we did, or an inequality that has a polynomial of degree three or higher. Now, we didn't do an example of a polynomial of degree three or higher, but we know that it could have, you know, up to three x-intercepts. So it might look something like this. But when you do your sign analysis, you still just pick points from in between these points to plug into your function. And as long as you can factor it, you're good to go. So your assignment's on page 33 to 34, and you can do numbers 1 to 18 or 25 to 30. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.